Hi, I am Timmy Walker, and I did my capstone project on the theater and dance department here at Wesley. I did it as a promotional video to attract students to the department and to the college in general. I'm the chair of the department. I'm an associate professor here at Wesleyan. I teach uh, pretty broadly. It's a small department, so I teach acting, I teach movement, I teach playwriting, and sometimes I teach theater history, sort of all over the place, drama for youth, um, mostly the performance-based classes. I think what's great about Wesleyan's program is that it's small, so students get a lot of attention right away. Uh, whether they want it or not, <laughs> they're going to end up on stage. Uh, sometimes right out of freshman year, they can be the leads in shows. So it's not a large program where you're competing with graduate students or with many, many other majors. Um, you're gonna get a good bit of attention. They also hear the administration is supportive of the arts in general and has been for a while. Wesleyan has a pretty uh, long-standing tradition of the arts. So they support us as faculty members, but also as artists. So we're encouraged to continue to create and work and make art even outside of school. The thing that speaks to me the most about the Wesleyan Theater and Dance Department is that our faculty really care about us. I have gained some of the best life advice I've ever been given from professors in this program. I know that going into college, obviously you're bound to meet a lot of different people, but I think specifically within our department, it has pulled together so many people and so many backgrounds that I would not have otherwise interacted with, talked to, let alone become really close friends with and having good working relationships with. Hi, my name is Greg Mock. I run the acting directing program here at West Virginia Wesleyan College. One of the things we stress here is that you'd be able to get work when you graduate. So. One of the big things that I bring to the students is auditioning. Auditioning skills, knowing how to network, um, that whole part of it. Because you can be the best actor in the world, but if you don't know how to market yourself as an actor, then you may not get the work that you deserve. There's a lot of room for you to grow in your own individual way. Because um, A, class sizes are really small. Um, so you get a lot of one-on-one -on -one instruction with your professors. Lisa Denkla and I am the head dance team coach here at West Virginia Wesleyan College and I'm also the main adjunct dance instructor for the theater and dance department. Um, my main role here is to coach the competitive dance team. Uh, we do attend NDA, which is National Dance Alliance uh, Collegiate Nationals every year. Uh, we go through a qualification process and that is held in Daytona Beach, Florida, which is super exciting. Um, so that's kind of the competitive aspect of what we do for dance team along with perform at all the home football games with the marching band and various home basketball games. Um, we also do an annual production called Spotlight that features all of our routines. So our dance team here is very, very busy competing and performing. And then for the department, um, I'm lucky enough here to be able to choreograph our annual musical, as well as teach various classes for the department um, from tap, hip hop, ballet, uh, things like choreography and improvisation. And we also have a dance company and a dance repertory class that we offer to our students. All right, so my justification and purpose for this uh, project, admissions are low since COVID. Um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of colleges are experiencing this and a lot of organizations just in general, uh, admissions are low. So we have to admit that and face that head on and promote our departments here at Wesleyan to attract students to them uh, and to show the benefits of being a student here at Wesleyan. There is a decrease in students in the West Virginia Wesleyan College Theater and Dance Department, uh, specifically, also naturally, with uh, less students on campus, there's gonna be less students in the department. Of course, it's a uh, small department anyway, so it really should not suffer even more of a loss from that, so it's very important to attract students to the theater and dance department so it can continue to make amazing art. The program here deserves to have more students to get more funding and to allow for bigger and more ambitious seasons while still remaining collaborative. So we still want that small program uh, because I, that's really the benefit, that's what you see a lot in that video, a lot of people talk about, you know, the, the professors, the students, they talk about how small the department is. So you're able to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with your professor, you know them, 
they, you know, you have discussions with them. You, you are able to learn that way rather than lecture-based learning only. You get kind of best of both worlds where you have lecture and discussion-based, and you get to build a relationship with your professor. And so my reflection of this project, so uh, reflecting on the five to-dos I had for this, uh, to conduct professional interviews with professors in the theater and dance department, I did do that. I uh, conduct professional interviews with both upperclassmen and underclassmen students in the theater and dance department. I did this as well. I wanted to really show how students feel, both you know coming in as freshmen and who have been here for a few years and have experienced COVID and experienced the department through that and how we uh, how we adapt. Gather B-roll footage and show rehearsals, class activities, and application in the classroom. I did this just because I, you know, I didn't want it to just be talking at you. I wanted to show what they're talking about, you know, them in the classroom and being one-on-one -on -one with students and showing rehearsals and what that process is like, auditions, and just all of the things that we display the production process of producing a show with Wesleyan. Uh, I showed you know some of the production of uh, She Kills Monsters that was put on recently. Great production. Um, I uh, filmed a couple rehearsals um, so that I could use that and uh, feature that show in this because it was such a good show. I wish I would have gotten some uh, tech week because the uh, visuals were amazing. But um, gather yeah, B-roll footage of the buildings and spaces in which students use uh, in the theater and dance department. I thought this was important just so student you know potential students watching can see where they will be working and what uh, environments and atmospheres they're working on campus. So this is my original interview list, who I wanted to interview and who I wanted to be you know, a big voice in the video. So the students, Derek Castle, Elizabeth Tweedle, Jason Coping smith and Anthony Dan Cotton, and Hillary Brown. Um, I only ended up using Derek Hess and Ellery Brown out of those, uh, out of that list. Uh, this changed just because I realized you can't involve that many students in the video, and that's just one of the logistical things that you figure out when doing a video like this. I've always wanted to have, you know, to work on a video, a promotional video for something, and in doing so, I learned, you know, you can't have, you know, at the beginning, it's like, oh, I want to interview all these people and have them talk about how fun and awesome this department is, and then getting down to the nitty gritty, you realize you really can only have three or four, so that it's not ten minutes. <laughs> the faculty, uh, Thomas Schaffler, Gregory Mock, Dan Hughes, and Lisa Dinkwall, I did, uh, and um, Dan Hughes, I still have to uh, interview just because of scheduling issues, we'll talk about that later, just in, you know, doing this project, how you, uh, you know, learn to adapt and uh, figure things out, um, but that list was final. And then administration, I ended up not interviewing just because I wanted more, you know, department-specific uh, language and you know talking about the department specifically in itself. In the interest of time, I did not do that. So my uh, LOCs, my original ones. Uh, so locate and use information relevant to the goals, audiences, purposes, and context. Recognize the influence of messages. Evaluate personal communication strengths and weaknesses. Um, so yet the biggest one that stood out to me was recognize the influence of messages. Because in watching that video, I was saying what message I am putting out. If this really is promoting the department. If I watch this and I think, yeah, this seems really cool, or ah, this is sloppy, I, I don't like, you know, this doesn't look like a good, you know. Kind of seeing what message I really am putting out, uh, rather than what I want to be Okay, these were some challenges I ran into. Uh, time scheduling, weather, and technical difficulties. And I think those are uh, big challenges for a lot of the things we do. Um, but uh, in, in finding these challenges in doing this project, I was able to learn some lessons about these problems for anything in the future uh, in collegiate you know, uh, activities and uh, professional uh, and, you know, in my career. Um, so for time, be prompt, initiate the beginning stages of a plan immediately once it is complete. There were times when I knew what I wanted to do, but I hadn't really told anybody or tried to carry that out until much later in the process, and I didn't know why. I was, you know, so initiating that from the beginning helps people to plan, and so that you uh, are able to carry out your plan as it is, so you don't have to make any changes because, oh, somebody can't do this because I waited this late to you know, tell them. So to do that from the beginning. 
ask for schedules at the beginning of a process to allow it to be smooth, just to know where everybody is, those that you need to interview, and knowing what their schedules are and when you will need to work with them so that you have enough time so that you don't have to get in a quick interview and have sloppy, um, sloppy interviews from that, uh, making sure everything remains professional and getting everything taken care of in a timely manner. Uh, check forecasts religiously. So if you need good weather for, uh, for a shot or for your interview or if you're doing it outside, uh, check the check the weather, what, it, what it's going to be. There were times when I planned, I was like, oh, tomorrow I'll do this. You know, and I wake up and it's raining and I can't do it. So, you know, planning better uh, in that way as well is beneficial. Uh, check the technology well beforehand to ensure it will work. Uh, this was very important. I, I had gotten a camera to go uh, record some rehearsals and it was dead. The battery had died. So, yeah, you just run into those problems. So, checking that beforehand, making sure everything is ready. Really, the big message is prepare, 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 prepare. God, I can't even say it. But uh, prepare. There we go. Um, should have prepared to say that three times. But uh, <laughs> that's the big message through all of this. I. Uh, in, in what I prepared from the beginning, I recognized that that was the strengths in what I had in my project. And so, you know, I, I think it's fairly obvious, but it's difficult, we can admit that, to prepare everything from the get-go. Um, but striving to do that um, really helps you to have a, a good, cohesive promotional movie. So, sweet. That's it. Thank you.